Well, hey, CrossCart fans. So after just a couple days, we've got a jig. We've got all of our tubing bent. We've got it all notched for the main chassis. And today, we're just going to put everything on the jig, get it welded up, pull it off. This is a fun day. Now, something I ended up doing on my first build, which helped out a lot, was I took some of my scrap inch and a half square tubing and I cut it into three to three and a half inch lengths so that I could make barriers that would hold the tubing into the jig to make sure that it was absolutely perfectly aligned. So I'm gonna do that again. I've got three pieces. I'm gonna be able to make maybe 10 and we'll get them on the jig and it's gonna help us get everything aligned perfectly. All right, so the first focus is the floor. We've got our handy dandy little spots here. It's gonna make this super easy. All right, I tacked it, but I was so happy with the fitment that I went ahead and welded the top side of it. Um, this is the floor. I mean, we're gonna tack a lot of things together, but uh, the floor is the main piece. It's one and done. So since everything's connected to it, it needs to be super solid. Tight fit is a good sign. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna flip it. Flipping it is gonna check the symmetry of it. And there we go, we're perfectly symmetrical. Everything is fitting exactly how it did when it was on the other side. So now we're just gonna finish up these welds. All of these uh, little holders we made, little brackets, are gonna keep it in place so you don't get as much distortion while you're welding. Now, most of you know I don't consider myself a good welder. I consider myself a highly adequate welder. And I'll just show them to you, I don't care. It's a bit wormy, but I got good penetration, both sides are connected and it's sealed. You want to seal the tube. Um, you don't want water to get in there and rust your tube from the inside. So I'm using a 110 MIG welder. Here it is, Lincoln Electric. That's a 140 HD, weld pack 140 HD. Now, the reason you can get away with using this is because we're not using very thick wall tubing. If we check our chart, here's the MIG and wire diameter. We're shooting about, I don't know, 14 gauge? That's only a C. Yeah, that's right. I weld with it on C, it's not even at full power. I'm pretty sure I could crank it up to D and get better penetration and some prettier welds. If you're new to welding, uh, a tip is just because that gun's on doesn't mean you gotta fly through the weld. You have to set a pace to where you're getting good penetration. You're keeping your little glowing red glob uh, glowing and it's not uh, skipping. It's a, a, a consistent crackle as you're welding. So there's the floor. Now I'm actually gonna take it off of my stands and put it back on the floor because the next part is the main roll bar, the front windshield and hood, and then the rear uprights and these front pieces, that's gonna complete our, our triangle. Once all those are in, everything else just fits how it fits. It's pretty slick, you'll see. I like putting the floor in, but this, this is where you see it. This is where you see the chassis as not a pile of tubes. So, main roll bar goes on the main tubes. 
Sits in the back. Front windshield slash hood sits in the front. Look at that. That's your first, first look, first taste of your cross cart chassis. Oh, I love it every time. I love it every single time. Look at that. Now you can start sizing things up, start getting a feel for how it's gonna be when it's all done, what it's like to sit in it, hit the accelerator for the first time. All right, so we're mounting things to the jig and the idea is to get things square. Um, now, obviously everything's gonna fit and it's gonna fit together well, but if you wanna make like the left side match the right, this is where you can use the actual jig to mark and even out the left and right side. Like my main roll bar on this side, when it's fitting nicely, sits at 25 and a half. So all I'm gonna do is go to the other side, measure from the same point on the jig, and then I can square out my main roll bar and have it look good left to right, which is going to make the left and right pieces fit right in place. There we go, see now this side is, this side was maybe 3 16 further back than that side. So what you can do is you can get your weak side or non-aligned side tacked in place and then put your aligned side in place on the marks you made. Use welds to help this align. There's gonna be small variations in your degrees of bends. There's gonna be small variations in your notches, but all of them are easily overcome. The rear uprights can be kind of a bear. Uh, just because they're so long and easy to uh, make a mistake. There's three bends on it, there's a lot of distance, so even a half a degree on the bend is kind of a big deal. This is the fourth one of these I've built and I've overbent every single one. I don't think this one's gonna be any different to be honest. Yeah, so that's gotta come up. Now, the easiest way to do it is to lock in one side or the other and then just, just give it a pull and get it tacked in place. But you have to get one side locked in and then finagle the other side. Now, this is a bigger moment on this one, which means there's more, more torque you can get off that fulcrum. So I usually just get a good tack on the bottom side and then fit up the top side. Now, you can watch me struggle with this in time-lapse form. Here it is, stretched three inches, giving it directly three more inches of leg room. Came out really great. It actually didn't take that long. All right, so official time hack. I started this at 9.30 a.m. The current time is 11.45. So I put this together and situated all the parts that I'm gonna put on it 
in a very short amount of time. You can build one of these chassis in a weekend easily. So this is what we're looking at. I got ATV front suspension. I've got my Jags $30 seat in there. I've got a Predator 420 mounted up and I've got this straight axle setup on the back. Now, what I'm gonna do first, and this is inspired by the Dingoes, is just do one with no rear suspension. I'm gonna box this all in and just have a hard tail, if you will, with just front suspension. I was gonna do one with no suspension at all, but the wheelbase on this turned out to be 81 inches. So to have no suspension on a cart that is 81 inches long, I think would be just too brutal. And front suspension isn't super expensive. So now that you have the main chassis built, your imagination is gonna take you where you wanna go. Uh, Predator 212, Predator 301, 420, 670, two stroke 125, 250, four stroke 250, 450, 500, 525, Crotch rocket 600, 750,000 cc. Hayabusa, if you're crazy. <laughs> now, options for rear end. This is obviously the bottom side. Straight axle. Uh, you could probably fit a four-wheeler swing arm on the back, but you're going to have to get an expensive axle if you don't want to bend that sucker. You could do my personal favorite, which is the rear end out of an Outlaw 500 or 525 Polaris. These rear ends are super strong. They're super awesome. And uh, they hold up. They're rebuildable. And it's what I've used on my previous builds. I love them. I got this on eBay for $125. Now, it's missing some stuff, like a stub axle. Obviously, it needs new bearings, needs rebuilt, needs a brake caliper. But... This is an awesome start. Now, dropping a whole big bunch of money up front is tough, but spending 125 bucks and then 20 to $30 here and there to rebuild something is easier to swallow for sure. And that's why I like these so much. And I'm always keeping my eye out for them. You could do a Mazda Miata axle rear end. Now, here's what's cool. I'm just the catalyst for this. Uh, I started a Facebook build group for all the people building these and some awesome ideas have come out of this. Go check out JD's Garage. I'll leave the link in the description. He has shown you how to build a center carrier for Mazda Miata axles and what hubs to use. The collective mind is always stronger than one man. And I knew this when I started it. So I was leaning on people to make awesome innovations just like this one to make this even cooler. There's also someone else getting ready to make a sellable kit for a center carrier that will take Mazda Miata axles and sprockets and rotors off of a common vehicle that you can pick up anywhere. This is cool and it's huge. So like I said, I'm gonna start with a hardtail because that's the most inexpensive and this is an inexpensive cross cart build but then i'm going to do an inexpensive four link or trailing arm suspension of some kind using this solid rear axle so this is going to be an all-inclusive build with the inexpensive 420 showing you rear end options this is it once you get this chassis built your imagination is going to decide where you go from there so this one has been stretched three inches and you couldn't really see it while I'm building it, but you can see it now. Look at all that leg room. Look at how long this thing is. I mean, in a good way. Um, it's not going to meet cross cart specifications if you're planning on racing in Europe, but it is going to fit anybody, absolutely anybody. So that's it. Uh, one weekend, one chassis. Too easy. Now we're set up to get the real fun started. Uh, I was brief with this build, and there's a reason for that. I followed my own build series for the tips and tricks on how to build this. So if you want the in-depth details, the step-by-step -step on how to put all of this together, check out my YouTube channel because 
the first build I went super in depth and I didn't want to do it all over again. I just wanted to answer some of the questions that were coming up while people were building this. So I hope I answered all of those. I hope I gave you some, some tidbits and tips and tricks on how to uh, make this easier to build. So if you're enjoying this, uh, please subscribe. Um, it keeps me going. Uh, this is a lot of extra work for me since I have a full-time job. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. So if you would be kind and subscribe, give a like, maybe even comment if you want, I would really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.